Good morning or good afternoon. I'm Helen Torres and welcome to the 30th Annual Latina History Day, day two of our conference. For those of you who weren't able to join us yesterday, I want to thank you again um, for joining us today. And for those of you that did join us yesterday, thank you again for returning as we continue this week of celebrating Latina history during Women's History Month. I am Helen Torres, the CEO of this wonderful organization, Hispanas Organized for Political Equality. At Hope, our mission is to ensure the parity of Latinas at all levels, both politically and economically, which is why today's theme of building wealth in our community is so aligned with Hope's values. Latinas are 9% of the total U.S. population, and, we're, and our population is growing here. We are also on average 15 years younger than non-Hispanic white women. Latinos are the youngest demographic group in the country and the population under the age of 18 is growing even more quickly. What does this mean to our country? And what in, at the end of the day, it means that our, uh, the economic well-being of Latinas is tied to the economic well-being of, the, of our country as a whole. When our community thrives, our country thrives. And there's so much work to do. Latinas have the largest pay gap of any group across the United States. At 50 cents, 54 cents per dollar of what a white man makes. In California, we're speaking of a much larger gap. And so in California, where there's the largest group of Latinas, we have the largest gap. It's 42 cents to the dollar. And in places like the Silicon Valley, that's 33.5 cents per the dollar. A lot of work needs to happen. The existing inequalities have made Latinas particularly vulnerable during this economic downturn that has happened because of the pandemic. And Latinas are the demographic hardest hit by the current pandemic related financial losses. I invite you to learn more about these issues in HOPE's 2020 report on the economic status of Latinas. You can access the full report on our website, latinas.org. We know Latinas are essential to our workforce and our economy, and that we must be at the center of the economic recovery. Otherwise, the whole country will not recover equally and as fast as we need it to. We know that most, the more needs to be done to close the pay gap and to invest in the financial growth of Latinas. That's why I'm excited to have the conversations we're going to have today and, and about how we overcome these challenges and how do we build a more resilient economic future for Latinas and how we can grow our personal wealth. We've brought together some groundbreaking Latina entrepreneurs and financial experts to help us to dive into this and to the discussion of wealth building and financial resiliency and the role that education, especially post-secondary education work plays in our workforce. Thank you to our co-title sponsors, the Coca-Cola Company, the Estee Lauder Companies for helping us bring these important issues to light. And a big thank you to the sponsor of today's wealth and economy recovery sessions. The Bill, and Bill, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Wells Fargo Bank. I'm so excited for all the information that we'll be sharing and learning from you as well through our chat um, options and the tips and the resources that will be shared today. I hope that you will come out of this experience stronger and that we are all ready to take financial well wellness into our own hands. I'm also excited to introduce the fabulous MC for the day, Leslie Lopez. Leslie is the weekend morning weather anchor of ABC7 Eyewitness News. Good morning, Leslie. Thank Hi. you for joining us. Oh, and, yeah. Um, Go, yeah, I mean, this is wonderful. I'm very excited to be here, Helen, and everybody that's here attending. Uh, what an honor. What a great event. Um, and so I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to be part of this. And as we continue today, um, it, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I am I'm know that we're in for a really powerful uh, couple of days, a couple of hours here. So as we continue, um, you know, I'm just going to be uh, happy to just be with you guys. I honestly, this is just wonderful. So as we move forward here this morning, um, I am uh, here 
here to help with Hope's Latina History Day conference. This has been such a great event so far. I know yesterday was such a great day, so I'm excited for everything that's going to happen here today. In addition to that, we have an amazing program lined up, starting with our main stage speakers, including special remarks from the first Latino United States Senator for California, Alex Padilla. Uh, what an honor. We'll then hear from one of the leading Latina entrepreneurs in the United States, cultural strategist and social advocate, Beatriz Acevedo. After that, we'll transition over to some amazing breakout sessions. You'll be able to choose between attending a session on creative home strategy buying or buying and building uh, wealth strategies. And then that will be presented by Wells Fargo, or you have a session on post-secondary education pathways to economic recovery. That one will be presented by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We'll end the day a networking, shopping from Latina owned brands and accessing exclusive offers from Hope's partners at the Comrade Network Expo. Now, if you're currently watching on Facebook Live and you want to access the breakout sessions, expo and network opportunities and networking opportunities, all you have to do is register on Hopin. The Hope team is dropping the registration link into the Facebook live chat, and we hope you can join us. They're shopping, so I hope you can join us. That sounds like fun. If you're on Hopin, you're in the right place. And if you have any questions or tech issues on Hopin, just please enter those in the, into the event box. There's a chat box there on the right-hand side of your screen. And then the Hope staff is going to stand by to help assist you, so it should be pretty easy. So grab your cafecito, your jugo, your te, whatever you need to get settled into two and a half hours of Latina inspiration and empowerment. And now I'd like to welcome a big supporter of Hope's work to close opportunity gaps for Latinas. We just heard about those opportunity gaps. And speaking on behalf of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we are joined by Max Espinoza. Max is a senior program officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where he focuses on building the political and public will for education reforms that close opportunity and equity gaps in the United States. Thank you for being with us today, Max. Thank you so much, thank you so Leslie. Much. And thank you, Hope, Helen, and the Hope staff and the Hope Board of Directors for all that you do. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is proud to be a major year-round sponsor of Hope because of Hope's mission of enduring, ensuring political and economic parity for Latinas through leadership, advocacy, and education for the benefit of all communities. Whether it is, it is Latina Empowerment Days at the State Capitol, HOPE's uh, premier leadership institute, or this week's 30th Latina History Day conference, HOPE has remained committed to serving its mission to move the needle in areas such as health access, economic prosperity, and the education sphere. The Latina voice and advocacy are crucial in times like this when the global pandemic has highlighted serious disparities that our communities have always experienced, but are even more pronounced and exposed than ever before. And now that California's education system is grappling with this reality, we need organizations like HOPE with your powerful network on the ground in cities and communities across the state and at the highest levels in California to help inform the conversation. This year's Latina History Day conference theme, The Resilience of Hope, encourages us to reflect on the incredible resilience and leadership of Latinas during this past year and to embark in a new chapter guided by hope and progress. Latinas have always been the foundation of communities, demonstrating great resilience and leadership, regardless of the challenges before us. A strong foundation will be needed as we come out of the pan this global pandemic to create a more equitable world that allows everyone to thrive. And Latinas will be critical to this possibility. As they have throughout history, Latinas will help lead the way. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is proud to partner with Hope in this really important endeavor. It is now my great pleasure to introduce newly appointed United States Senator from California and the first Latino to represent California in the United States Senate, Senator Alex Padilla. In December 2020, United States Senator Alex Padilla was appointed by California 
Governor Gavin Newsom to finish the term of our now Vice President elect Vice President Kamala Harris. Senator Padilla was sworn in as California's first Lat Latino Secretary of State in 2015, also making history, and was reelected in 2018, receiving the most votes of any Latino elected official in the entire United States. As Secretary of State, Senator Padilla worked tirelessly to make California's elections more accessible and inclusive, serving as a model for other states throughout the nation while fighting to protect the integrity of our voting systems. With that, let's hear from Senator Padilla who has sent us a special message. Let's take a look. Good morning and welcome to HOPE's 30th annual Latina History Day Conference. I'm Senator Alex Padilla and I'm pleased to join you virtually to celebrate the many important contributions of Latinas across the country. At the heart of Women's History Month, Latina History Day was created to honor the historical achievements of Latinas, to highlight today's leaders, and to feature rising Latina leaders who will carry on the important work. I'm thrilled to join you in recognizing and celebrating Latinas today, whether it's uplifting the historic achievements of women like Nora Vargas, the first Latina to serve as supervisor in San Diego County, or recognizing those who continue to make history like Isabel Guzman, who is on her path to being confirmed as the U.S. Small Business Administrator for President Biden. I want to thank HOPE for your years of leadership and commitment to training, connecting, and activating so many stellar Latinas. I've been proud to support your leadership and your advocacy work throughout my public service career. Now, my career would not have been possible without the sacrifice of my mother, Lupe, or without the love and support of my wife, Angela. It's hard not to think of them on Latino History Day. As you look ahead to the future, we owe a debt of gratitude to so many Latinas, like my mom, like Angela, and like all of you who are blazing a path forward. That's why today's event is so important. For three decades, HOPE has championed policies that advance Latinas and has built a Latina leadership pipeline from high school youth to executives and government officials reaching over 56,000 Latinas. Thanks to your organizing and advocacy, Latinos continue to ascend to the highest levels of public, private, and nonprofit sectors. My appointment was made possible by groups like HOPE, who rallied across the state to advocate for the first Latino to represent California in the United States Senate, a historic moment indeed. Your commitment to ensuring the Latino community is heard and served is important now more than ever. As the world continues to recover from the deadly and devastating impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic that has devastated our community, we need your voices to help chart the path forward for all of us. We know that Latinas have especially been impacted by both the health and economic fallout of the pandemic. As the COVID-19 recovery begins, equity for Latinas must be a priority. And you have my commitment as a United States Senator that I will continue to be your ally and champion. Thank you for the invitation to speak and happy Latina History Day 2021. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Senator Padilla, for your special message. We are just so proud here in California to have a Latino representing us in the United States Senate. And a big thank you again to Max Espinoza and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for their ongoing support of HOPE's work. Next up, we are joined by another great supporter of HOPE. Alice Suarez is a Regent Bank president for Wells Fargo's Foothill Valley region. In this role, she oversees nearly 1,000 consumer banking employees across 76 branches in Los Angeles and San Bernardino County. She's an active member in her community and a small business advocate. Alice serves on the California Restaurant Association Foundation Board of Directors as well. This is a great honor. It was wonderful to hear from Senator Padilla. Alice, I'd love to send it over to you, and I'm sure you're inspired too by his words. And thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Leslie. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to day two of HOPE's Latina History Day virtual conference. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Your participation takes means so much more 
and make certain that Latino communities are indeed on paths to brighter futures. And as we heard from Alex Padilla just a moment ago. I also wanna thank Helen, Belinda, Priscilla, and the entire HOPE team for making Latina History Day virtual conference possible and for continuing HOPE's 30-year heritage of empowering Latinas with the skills, knowledge, and confidence to be leaders and advocates. Thanks to HOPE, Latinas are creating fundamental changes in California that are leading to better economic opportunities for themselves, their families, and their neighbors. Each of you joining us today are now part of the legacy. Today's focus on building wealth as a banker, leader, mentor, and mom, I'm a firm believer in the power of investing in financial literacy. I believe as a woman, we are natural born multitaskers, project managers, and wear multiple hats. Improving our financial savviness today empowers us to make better informed decisions on the future and helps us plan the steps we need to take to set up our families and communities on a path toward economic mobility. We have the power to build stronger and more resilient communities. And we need now more than ever. At Wells Fargo, uh, as Leslie shared, I oversee over a thousand bank employees across 76 branches in Los Angeles and San Bernardino County. I saw firsthand how individuals and families struggled to navigate the unfair economic realities of the pandemic through at our communities. I also saw firsthand how Latinos, moms, sisters, daughters, and friends demonstrated incredible leadership, strength, and determination. Your actions last year kept hope alive, kept food on the table, and kept your loved ones safe and healthy. I don't wanna to presume to know exactly how the pandemic affected each of you. Our journeys are all different. One thing I have in common though, is that we're all here virtually together. To me, that shows that we have a deep vested interest in gaining knowledge, insight, and resources. And maybe a nice boost of morale that will help give us the confidence to make informed decisions in the new normal that's ahead. Knowing that so many diverse and talented women are educating themselves on the economy, finance, culture, and professional development gives me hope that the decisions you make this year will empower those around you to also make informed decisions and those around them to do so as well. Thank you again for taking the time to be here today and investing in your future. I look forward to perhaps seeing many of you later this fall at one of HOPE's Latino Empowerment Day workshops taking place throughout California. Wells Fargo is once again a proud sponsor. Now, it's my honor to introduce today's keynote speaker. Beatriz Acevedo is one of the leading inspirational voices and Latina entrepreneurs in the United States. She has dedicated her career to empowering and opening doors to the next generation of Latino leaders. Beatrice started her career in media at a young age, first on radio and later on television. Her work earned her three Emmys, one MTV Music Award, and a Media Correspondent Award, among others. She later became a tech media entrepreneur as the co-founder and president of MeToo, the leading digital media branding for young Latinos in the US. Her latest startup, Suma Wealth, was founded with the vision of closing the Latinx wealth gap by providing financial education via in-culture content, FinTech tools, and digital experiences, all in highly engaging wealth building digital platform. We are so excited and thankful to have you here today with us today. Welcome Beatrice Acevedo. Thank you so much for that introduction, Julie, and buenos dias to all my Latinas out there. What a historical time it is to be a Latina. More than any other time in history, we are at an accelerated rate graduating high school and enrolling in college. We are launching more companies than anyone else, as we just heard earlier. We are 50% of the fierce breadwinners in our families 
but also the warm caregivers in our familias. Even when there has never been a better time to be a Latina, we have a long road ahead of us to pay for the future generation of young Latinas that are coming right behind us. By 2020, Latinas will be a third of the US population and hopefully by then, we will have made some changes for the better. Our mamas and our abuelas taught us so many valuable lessons that we proudly have passed on to our own daughters today. But I want you to consider on learning some of them that are damaging our wealth building abilities and more importantly, our mental health. Let's start with the one I despise the most. Calladita te ves más bonita. No, calladitas we don't look prettier. It has never been more critical that we use our voice and take up as much space as we can in every single room that we walk into. When I was a kid, my bold and outspoken personality got me into a lot of trouble and made my poor abuelita Rosita incredibly uncomfortable, especially that day that we saw the vecina after church that had asked her to bring her some fajas, some girdles, or our abuelita's version of a Spanx, from her trip to the US and never paid her for them. Disculpe, señora, ¿cuándo le va a pagar a mi abuelita el dinero que le debe? I asked in a really firm voice at the age of eight years old. Even when this was putting my grandmother in financial distress and she would complain behind closed doors, that is exactly how I knew la vecina owed my abuelita money, she was beyond mortified of me being so vocal and direct. Mijita, por favor, calladita te ves más bonita, she would say to me. As an immigrant, this mentality of being quiet and keeping our heads down and being grateful for anything that is given to us is not serving us well. Don't get me wrong, being grateful is an incredible quality to have, but not if you know something is unfair. I fully believe that one contributing factor for us Latinas being at the bottom of the pay gap, as we heard from Helen earlier, has something to do with this guilt that we grow up with when it comes to speaking up. And that includes negotiating our worth. But not speaking up is costing us each a million dollars less in wages during our productive careers versus our wild ma white male counterparts for the exact same jobs, even when we have the same education. It's sad to see how many Latina girls still grow up with this saying, and it's just the girls, never the boys. But this message has to be eradicated altogether. The message needs to be the opposite. Use your voice to fight for what is right, for what is just, and for what you deserve. At my previous job, I wanted to make sure every Latina and Latino got paid equitably. So I decided to personally negotiate the salaries, particularly with a senior team that had some disparities. The men would be fierce negotiators, not just on the salary, but on the bonus, on the time off, on the potential commissions, you name it. Every negotiation with Latino men would leave me so drained and exhausted, it was like going to a war zone. However, with the Latinas, except for one of them that I clearly remember, they would all be grateful. They never asked if the pay was the same that the men in the company were being paid. They did not do any research of what the market would pay for their particular promotion or new title that I was offering. They would only be grateful and were very concerned in assuring me that I would not regret my decision of promoting them and how much harder they would work to prove to me that I had made the right decision. First, I did not need them to work harder or prove anything to me. I was giving them the title and the promotion because they deserved it. They did not need to make any changes or add any extra hours to their work. It was really fascinating, but heartbreaking at the same time to see the stark difference between Latinas and Latinos at the same level and how different they would both value themselves and their work. I get it. Negotiating is uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable for me even today. It makes me sick to my stomach, actually. I feel so guilty for not just being grateful for the opportunity, even when I know I deserve more, more pay, more equity, or a better title. 
But if you are going to do one thing that makes you uncomfortable, as some suggest, this is it. I promise it will be transformational, not only for your own wealth, adding that extra million dollars to your bank account, well, ideally your investment account, but for the American economy as well, with your contribution in additional taxes that will help all Americans. The second saying that I want you to consider erasing from your brain is one that puts us at a really vulnerable place, especially as Latina women who are expected to do so much. Puedes dormir cuando te mueras. You can sleep when you're dead. We cannot ignore the importance of self-care or self-love before we even start learning how to build wealth. Two concepts that we did not grow up embracing in our Latino community, particularly where we are all about others before self. My dad used to tell me, you cannot give what you don't have. When he would see me run myself to the ground working, I got my first ulcer at 18, thinking I was invincible, working three jobs and going to college. So for all of my type A alpha Latinas out there today, here's a good piece of advice. Perfection doesn't exist. Stop chasing it and life is not your work. As I mentioned earlier, the younger generations of Latinas are becoming more and more the main breadwinners in their families but they haven't let go of all the other roles and responsibilities they still have as primary caregivers, and many of them also being responsible for most of the household chores. I am married to a non-Latino who has no machista gene in him, thank God. But as a good Latina wife, I took a lot of pride and set the rules early on when we got married that I would take care of most things in the household because I wanted to. And I saw my own mother that also had a professional career do the same. So that is the model that I grew up with. I felt like I could do it all. I took pride in my superwoman Latina powers to be on top of mostly everything except myself. Being mothers, wives, daughters, CEOs, mentors, drivers, cooks, etc., something's got to give. And it's usually us. We go to the bottom of the list of priorities because there is so much to do that is more important than us. But if we break, everything else will break as well. I have a funny and pretty illustrative story of that aha moment in my life. Pre-COVID, I would travel constantly and often outside of the US. And the running joke with my teammates was at what moment would I get a WhatsApp message call and text, it was both the call and the text, from Benita, our nanny, in the middle of a keynote, a board meeting, or an investor pitch with a very urgent request from her. This particularly emergency read like this. Señora, es urgente que me llame. Ya no hay tortillas. I kid you not, this is a true story. She kept calling and texting me because we were out of tortillas and I was supposed to solve the shortage of tortillas in my house in Los Angeles from a stage in Cannes. After the conference, when I asked the nanny, why don't you ask el señor? I'm in France giving a lecture. Her response was, ay no señora, yo no puedo molestar al señor con estas cosas. Se ve muy ocupado trabajando. I mean, I was working too. <laughs> But I take full responsibility for this. I had positioned myself as the go-to person for anything related to the household. So the message here is ask for help and set yourself up for success. I am learning to ask for help and also learning to say, I can't do it. I'm exhausted. Can you please help me? It's hard for me not to feel weak and at times embarrassed that I can no longer do everything as I used to, but it's necessary. The expectations that we put on ourselves that we can do it all are completely unrealistic. We will be able to give more if we take time to replenish. If we are depleted, we have nothing to give. So before building external wealth, we need to build our own internal wealth and make ourselves a priority. We are the best ROI, the best investment we can make is definitely in ourselves. But let's do talk about building external wealth, which is also critical in our community. We cannot be the demographic that spends the most but saves the least. 
So this final phrase, I want you to consider eradicating from your brain forever as well. El dinero es del diablo. No, it's not. This is a big lie that was engraved in my dad's mind till the day that he died. My dad, as many first-time college students in our community, came from nothing and worked hard to pay his way through law school, becoming a prominent attorney, historian, and at the end of his life, philanthropist. But money had a horrible stigma for him. He felt guilty for having money, would criticize rich people, esos nuevos ricos, he would say of people that would splurge and superfluous things, according to him. And he eventually found a way to make peace with his wealth by starting a family foundation and leaving every single cent he made in his life to others who were more in need. But make no mistake, in this country, we will never have true power if we don't have economic power. And we need to make massive changes in our communities and in our own mindsets to get there. I was mortified to learn recently that the average amount that Latino millennials have saved for retirement and have in emergency savings accounts, it's close to zero. I know what it feels like to be young and think that you are on top of the world one minute, but you can lose everything in the next minute. And the pandemic has proven this to us. That is how I became actually an entrepreneur, by necessity after being fired from my cushy TV job in my early 20s. And this is how so many Latinos, and particularly Latinas, become entrepreneurs or solopreneurs. The lack of opportunities has never stopped our community. We create our own opportunities. Even when Latinas are the worst paid or the ones that have the least access to capital to grow their businesses, Imagine the possibilities if Latinas had the support they so deserve guiding them in their wealth building journey. My current work with my new startup, Suma Wealth, is hyper focused on helping our community thrive, particularly around the topic of closing the wealth gap. For every dollar a white family has, we only have 20 cents. So we certainly have a lot of work to do. But Latinas are our hope. They are not the future, but the present. Latinas are the stronger force in the mainstream economy. They account for 86% of purchasing decisions. 1.5 million businesses are majority owned by Latinas, with 87% growth over the last five years ahead of any other female demographic, even with all the challenges that we've had. However, Latinas, more so than Latinos, say that they are incredibly confused and overwhelmed when it comes to their finances. This is a massive pain point we have in our community. The lack of in culture content and financial tools that we can trust and that speak to us on an emotional level, letting us know that we belong in the money conversation. This is our goal at Suma Wealth to provide our community with all the resources they need to gain financial stability coming out of the pandemic, but with a goal of financial prosperity. We have seen how Latinas in particular are so hungry for this financial information, as we heard earlier. No more saving under the colchón or in the Café Bustelo coffee tin. This is a big part of the old learnings that we need to let go of as soon as possible. We know knowledge is power. So the quicker that we start learning, the quicker that we will start taking control of our economic power and the faster we can start building that generational wealth and setting an example for the younger generations. We can really make a tangible change in one generation. If every other generation never saved for the retirement, that can stop with us. Knowing that many of us are still going to be responsible for a parent's financial well-being as they age, we need to start planning now. It's never too late. But hopefully as we do that for our parents and ourselves, our kids will have the opportunity to finally break the cycle. We have plenty of free resources available. There are plenty of free resources available. We have them also at SUMA from the Neto sessions that show you everything you need to know how to start investing with as little as $5 to new tax regulations, what's all the craze with cryptocurrencies to a summer, the Neto bootcamp for Gen Z kids before they head to college to set them up for financial success.
We have tools that let you calculate buying a home versus renting, how to lower your credit card debt, how to set saving goals, and one of the most important tools, creating and keeping a budget. Because you can't improve what you can't measure. Soon we'll have a free financial checkup that we want millions of Latinos to take advantage of. To wrap things up, remember that you are deserving of wealth, of self-love, and of speaking up and using your voice, even if it contradicts learnings that we grew up with. That was then, but this is now. Remember that you don't need to do more or prove that you are deserving. You are enough. You belong just as you are. Your insights that only you have are priceless. You are única e irrepetible, like no one else in the world. And that is incredibly powerful. I think it's a great time in history to be a Latina. Thank you, Helen. And thank you, Hope, for inviting me today. And thank you for all the contributions that you make for the world to be a better place. I am so incredibly honored to be in your company fighting the good fight that will hopefully make an impact for generations to come. Latinas Unidas jamás serán vencidas. Thank you all. Oh, that was so wonderful. Thank you so much, Beatrice. Brava, brava. You are truly a transformational leader. And we are just so thankful for you and all you have done and all you continue to do to empower and also increase the visibility of the Latino communities and to close that Latino wealth gap that you were just talking about. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Sharing. Yeah, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. It was incredible. So we're almost ready to transition over to our breakout sessions. Our panelists are connecting and we'll be ready for you shortly to discuss home ownership strategies and then kind of continue the conversation on how to strengthen economic recovery efforts through education. To close out our main stage program, I'd like to welcome CEO Helen Torres back to the virtual stage. And I'll say hasta mañana. I'll be back here again tomorrow for of the conference where we'll celebrate March 12th and the official Latina History Day with a very special quest. Uh, so thank you everybody and enjoy the rest of the day. It was an honor to be here, honor to listen to wonderful, impactful stories and uh, just truly a, a wonderful day to be a Latina. So uh, you continue on Helen and I'll be back tomorrow. See you all later. Thank you so much, Leslie. Um, you did an incredible job emceeing our second day of Latina History Day. A fantastic way to start hearing from our incredible friend, um, CEO of Suma Wealth, Beatriz Acevedo. Thank you, my dear friend, for your constant contribution to our, our Latina community. And we are there with you ensuring that Suma Wealth is of great success so that we all can be successful in our, in our community as well. We also heard from the great newly um, appointed states, our U.S. Senator representing California, Alex Padilla, a longtime friend and supporter of Hope. We were so proud of seeing his um, swearing in ceremony and being part of making history here in California. And then, of course, a big thank you to Alice Juarez from Wells Fargo Bank. Incredible. Um, leadership. Thank you for always being there for hope as well. And our good friend, Max Espinoza, joining us from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who has been just tremendous in ensuring that Latinos and Latinas have a seat at the table. So thank you everyone for being part of the morning show. We're going to be transitioning into hop in for the workshops and the rest of the conference, which is inclusive of our Comadre Network, where you want to be supporting local Latina small businesses. Um, as we make that transition, I'd like to thank our incredible partners who share their time and financial support to ensure Hope can deliver stellar programming to Latinas everywhere across the United States. And of course, through this conference, Latina History Day. A big thank you to our co-title sponsors, the Coca-Cola Company and the Estee Lauder Companies. Thank you to our platinum sponsors, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Walt Disney Company, thank you so much for your leadership and the and Wells Fargo Bank. To our premier sponsors, Chevron, Comcast, NBC Universal Telemundo Enterprise, and Southwest Airlines. To our patron sponsor, sponsor AT&T. And to many thanks to our Hope year-round sponsors, Charter Spectrum, Facebook, and Union Bank, and Marathon. 
And we're also very grateful to our diamond sponsors, AARP and stick with me, a long name for a great law firm, Brown, George, Ross, O'Brien, Anaway, and Elis. Elis. Um, we want to thank them. They have an incredible Latina partner. So happy to support them as they support us. And a big thank you to all, all, all our generous sponsors overall. We're going to take a quick five minutes to break and transition over to our breakout sessions. A reminder, if you're tuned in to via Facebook live stream, but would like to join the sessions, you have to register on the link being shared on Facebook chat. To access the breakout rooms and hop in, simply click on sessions tab on the left-hand side of your screen. You'll be able to choose from two sessions to attend to. After the one hour breakout sessions, you'll be sure be sure to stick around for another half hour and participate in the Comadre Network Expo, where you can shop on from Latina owned brands and access exclusive offers that are being offered by our sponsors and partners. Some of our exhibitors are going live in their booths to be sure. To, so be sure to be supportive of them and head over directly after the sessions. If you're looking to continue networking and just want to say hi to the HOPE staff, we also have a HOPE booth. So come on over to the HOPE booth, join other Latinas and connect with other Latinas from the conference to be part of the networking at the HOPE booth. A reminder, we do have a conference evaluation form and we would love for all of you to fill it out at the end of your participation of the event. If you're participating in one day or all three days, you have an opportunity to fill out this evaluation and be in a raffle to, to win one of the very exclusive packages that we have from Estee Lauder that's valued over $300. The survey is linked into the reception area and you can receive it via email as well. We truly value your feedback and it helps us improve our programming. It helps us ensure that we're representing your Latina voice. So please take the time to fill it out. I'll see you back here tomorrow um, as we celebrate Latina History Day, officially Latina History Day, always the second Friday of, Ma of March during Women's History Month. And we'll celebrate with an official proclamation for a variety of city councils across the nation. And one in particular, we'll be hearing from LA City Council President Nuri Martinez. And of course, we'll have keynotes and other sessions and panels. So please help um, look forward to joining you tomorrow as we are welcomed by an incredible keynote speaker, Alicia Menendez, and other other Latinas executives and change makers. Look forward to seeing you at the sessions in the Comada Network. Continue and happy Latina History Day, part two.